Welcome, Welcome to Canada! Canada. What's up, YouTube? I'm Josh. I'm Ben. And we are Game Hunters R Us. Uh, in lieu of pickups videos, which we have not had a pick up, up in a while, um, we're going to do a best and worst games that we've played in this yeah. year of collecting or year of. Yeah. N not, not all these games are games that came out this year because neither of us have played enough games for that. Definitely not. <laughs> it's actually been kind of a nightmare to match our schedule up to do this video. Yeah. We've been trying to do this since Boxing Day, I think. Yeah, it's been about a week and a half <laughs> or so. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, yeah. it's basically any games that we've played. Not necessarily played all the way, all the way through, but at least played enough of that we know yeah. that we either like it or we hate it. Yeah, enough to, to know we either want to finish it or we never want to play it again. Yes. <laughs> um, so, hopefully you will be entertained for however long this episode is. Um, so, well, for, first, uh, because you're in university, you didn't have as much time to play games this year, so Not you really. only had five and five. Five and five. Whereas I have ten best and nine worst. <laughs> so I'm. We're gonna do the best first, right? Are we doing best? I thought we were doing worst first. Let's let's do the best first. Best first, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so I'm just gonna rush through s ten through six. Okay. Just just to get that out of the way, and I won't say anything about them. Okay. So. My tenth best is Palace Madness Returns. Ninth is New Super Mario Brothers U. Uh, titles for that system suck. <laughs> <laughs> and then eight is Remember Me. Seven is Lego City Undercover. I heard that was good. Actually. And six is Grand Theft Auto Five. Okay. Yeah. So, what's your fifth best? My fifth best game. My fifth best game is Killzone Mercenaries on the Vita. Uh, it's a pretty fun game. It's the first actual game, portable game, that is a twin stick shooter. First person shooter. That's not worthy. And it's pretty good. Graphics are fun. Graphics, graphics are fun. The, kill, the Killzone games are usually pretty good, so it doesn't surprise me to hear that this one's good too. So, but yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, My... Uh, my number five, I actually joined three games together for this. Okay. I, I only brought two, but uh, Saints Row 2 through 4. Here's 2 and 4. Now, they're all good for different reasons, really. The second one is the closest to a normal game they have, but all three of them have a great sense of humor to them. And as, as the series goes on, it, this game feels dated. The graphics are kind of old. The gameplay is a little eh. Yeah. The third, the third game has a much better gameplay, but the story is the weakest of the three. Yeah. And this game is just balls out insane. <laughs> it's basically Crackdown, but with a story, more powers, and there's a lot more to do. Fair enough. Technically speaking, Grand Theft Auto V is a better game, and there's more to do in it, but I prefer those games, just because of the sense of humor. Fair enough. Uh, my number four. Uh, I, I'm cheating with this one as well, and I have three games in one. That's <laughs> fine. That's, that's fine. Um, I may be annoying people, actually, with this, uh, but I'm... I'm just trying to convey my love for light gun games in the PS2. <laughs> uh, Time Crisis 2... There's two. Time Crisis 2, Time Crisis 3, and Vampire Night, all in the PS2, all like on games. So much fun. Uh, there was a night where Andrew, uh, who did our flashback uh, special episode. He's done some behind the scenes stuff right, too. Yeah, every now and then. Every now and then. Uh, but anyways, he and I spent an entire night, and I'm talking about a full like 12 hours, playing Vampire Night and unlocking everything. We went through this game about 25 <laughs> times in one night. Wow! <laughs> that takes dedication. But it was so much fun. And we three, it got to the point where 
you have to shoot the gun so fast, and we didn't have we didn't have a, uh, the turbo gun that I have now. We had the old school like gun con one, uh, <laughs> and we had to shoot that gun so fast that I was holding the screen, I was holding the gun to the screen, and Andrew was sitting there with his finger, just rapid firing <laughs> because a human being cannot physically pull the trigger enough times to beat the bosses in that game. No, I, I can fully understand. <laughs> like, I'm not as big of a fan of those kinds of games as you, but they, they are fun. They are fun. So, yes, that's definitely, if you guys have an old school, like, CRT TV and we're looking for some old school fun, <laughs> Light Gun Games is the way to go. My number four is Borderlands 2. I actually had to wait to play this game until after Christmas because another friend of mine and I decided to play through it online together. Yeah. It was so worth it. It took us about three months to play through it, but it was so much fun. Yeah. I have Borderlands 1 I haven't played 2 yet, but maybe one day. It, it really is the kind of game where you have to play it with someone else in order to fully appreciate At least one other person. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, number... F I'm in number three? I'm in number three yeah. now. Okay, number three. Uh, Psychonauts on the PS2. Good game. A really good game. I still haven't played it yet. I, I have it. I want to play it. But. Uh, I sat down for a night and played this for about oh gosh, about six hours straight. Uh, it's by Tim Schafer, um, who has a crazy art style. It is, it's an insane game. You're you're physically going into the minds of other people to do things and like fighting whatever creatures are lurking in their minds. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a it's a you can say a 3D platformer game, uh, but definitely inventive, definitely original. So uh, keep an eye out for it. It's actually pretty rare, so if you find it for cheap, it's definitely worth it. Yep, uh, I actually found this with a bunch of uh, PS2 finds in one of the videos. Um, I believe it was maybe the second or third epi episode, I, or seven or third video on that channel. Way back. <laughs> way back. Um, it just had like a, a futon full of stuff that I picked up for crazy good deals and just trying to catch up on all the pickups. Uh, and it's in there, and I think I only paid like four or five dollars for it. So. That's less than I paid for it. I think I paid about twelve, which is okay. still pretty good. Still pretty good. That's still pretty good. Okay. Hey, that, that was your number three. Right? That was my number three. My number three. I guess I don't have it here. My number three is Tomb Raider, the reboot. Okay, yeah, the new one. Just, like, it's, it's not perfect, but there's a lot to like about it. The graphics are good. When the game has maybe too many fall scenes and they does kind of hold the game back, the game is at best when it's quiet and gives you open space to move around and sneak in. Yeah. That's where the game truly shines. Plus there's the adventure stuff. Ish storytelling to it. It's a slight Metroid style open world. Yeah. Which really works in its favor. And uh, it's a brutal game. Too. There's a lot of brutal it's death brutal. scenes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like Uncharted, but Xbox people can play it too. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, they just announced that they're working on a sequel and, and a comic mini series that goes between them. I'm looking forward to both of those. Should be good. I did enjoy that game as well. Yeah. It's not on my list though, but it, it was a good game. Uh, number two on my list. Spec Ops The Line. Excellent game. Excellent game. Uh, it's a third person shooter, military shooter. Um, not something like uh, Army of Two or Years of War, which I'm fans of both of those games as well. Um, this one is has a similar feel, but the storytelling in it is much different. It has a, a very different take on uh, the, the narrative of war and how that affects certain soldiers and things like that. So it was, it was an interesting take on the genre that I really appreciated. I haven't played the game yet. I really want to. It's definitely worth it. And it's pretty yeah. cheap out there, too. It's not... Who knows? It might be on my list next year. If we do next this. year? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> number two for Ben. My number two is... This might surprise you that it's only number two. I am, I'm surprised. It's the <laughs> Last of Us. I haven't played this game yet. I need to. I have it. I haven't played okay. it. Okay. In terms of... Uh, the, in a lot of ways, this game isn't all that original. There's a lot of stuff in here that's been done to death this generation. Stealth gameplay, third-person shoot, cover shooter, zombies. They've all been done to death. The difference being, this game does all of it very, very well. There's a unique flavor to it. There's the whole survival aspect that isn't usually done very well, and the art design is 
very good. The graphics are really the best you'll find this generation on any system. And uh, the character development is the second best I've seen in anything all year. The only the only character development I've seen better was done in the Avatar Last Airbender show, which had three seasons to develop these characters, <laughs> whereas this is just one game. Yeah. If, if any of this sounds appealing, third-person shooter with a little bit of stealth gameplay that's not completely necessary, you should definitely play it. It's, it's phenomenal. This is... This game alone is worth getting a PlayStation 3 for. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, my number one game, and probably no big surprise, um, I love this game, two, two bits. Grand Theft Auto V. By far, best game I've played all year. Um, if you're gonna own one game, I think, to play constantly, Grand Theft Auto V is the winner. Especially with the addition of GTA Online, so I guess I'm kind of cheating because there's two games in there. Uh, GTA. No, I wouldn't call that cheating. <laughs> um, I spent hours upon hours upon hours upon hours playing this game. The single player is fun. It's so much fun. Uh, the online, we've spent, we did an entire game night playing Grand Theft Auto V online. That was a fun night. It was so much fun, and you know, we started a crew, and we just are just leveling and just messing around online, getting money and guns, and just... Honestly, it's it's so much fun just to mess around in, and uh, yeah, I can't really talk about that much. But uh, honestly, it's it's yeah. the game when I'm sitting at home and I have nothing to do. That's the game I put in the system. It it's the kind of game where if you start talking, you won't be able to stop. Exactly. So I'm gonna <laughs> cut myself here. <laughs> number one game. My number one is Super Metroid. I I I've played touches of it here and there before, but this year I finally finished it. It's actually what got me into trying to complete the Metroid collection. There there really isn't that much to say about it. it it's basically the perfect 2D platformer of its kind. Yeah, for me, that's the only game that was better than The Last of Us this year. Good. I haven't played Metroid. I haven't really played any of the Metroid games. I know it's probably uh, sacrilege to say as a game collector. But Everyone has their own tastes. I... I Want to know another piece of sacrilege? What? I haven't really played any Zelda games. I actually haven't played too many of them either. <laughs> I'm currently playing through Ocarina of Time for the first time ever. So. Good game. Yes. What I've played, it's pretty good. So, but yeah. uh, I guess technically it could be put on the But I'm trying to go away from the obvious titles aside from Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna rush through the four. Worst. Worst that above five, okay. ex except for one. The ninth worst game is Remember Me. Didn't, was that on your top five? Yes. <laughs> I really liked the game, but at the same time, everywhere you looked, you can see how it could be better. So that that's why it's on. I I feel guilty putting it on my best list without making sure you know it's not the greatest game in the world. So that's why it's also on the worst. Okay. Then there's eight is Deadpool. <laughs> it's eh. It depends on whether you like the writer Daniel Way or not. And then and then six is Final Fantasy thirteen. And uh, and well, the sixth worst is Tier Three. I'm surprised Final Fantasy was lower on the list. <laughs> I already talked enough about that. So. Yeah, Ben did a vlog on that. So if you're interested in why he doesn't really like that. <laughs> Go check that out. So it's your fifth worst game. My fifth worst game. Uh, it is Xena Warrior Princess The Talisman of Fate from the N64. You and I both played yeah, that. Yeah, I remember playing that. <laughs> I, I actually forgot about that game. <laughs> we probably beat this game in what, 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> and part it of those 20 minutes was learning how to play the game. Learning how to play the game. <laughs> um, it is not anything I expected out of a Xena game. It's a, it's a 3D fighter. It's a fighter game. We put it in expecting like some kind of like I don't know 3D platformer slash adventure game. Nope. Yeah, if it I a fighting game. <laughs> if I remembered that, it would have been on my list. So consider that my tenth worst game here. <laughs> there you go. Need to worry for this. Uh, it's decent, I guess. For I guess it's kind of fun because you can have like a four-player fighting mode, 
which could be fun if you're if you're like having a game night, you're looking for something fun just to play to mess just, around just with. Cheesy fun, if cheesy you're fun or something. <laughs> sure, but don't ever take it as a serious game. And I think that's I think part of the reason it's on my list is just the disappointment of not getting what I expected. Which yeah, is, I think that's that, partly, that, mostly why I have most of the games in my list. That's not the expected result of Disappointing it. factor is worthy of putting on a worst. Yes. My fifth worst game of the year, I actually did play through this. The Avatar The Last Airbender game. The, this game, the 360 version is known for being the easiest 1000 achievement points in existence. Even with the slower op operating system these days, <laughs> if the disc isn't in the system, you can get all 1,000 achievement points within five minutes of turning the system on. Yeah, and I've done that. <laughs> I literally only put that game in so to get the achievement. I actually played through the game this year, partly because I got into the show, which is a very good show. If you can get into animated TV shows, you should definitely give it a shot. But uh, this game is just cheap. The graphics are worse than last gen, as in PlayStation 2 original Xbox era. Yeah. And uh, the gameplay is cheap. It's way too easy. The only people that could enjoy this game are people who have watched the show. And even then, it's kind of a waste of time unless I you really have nothing better to do, which I kind of did <laughs> when I played it. Diehard fans. <laughs> um, Alright, now my number four. Four, right? Uh, Duke Nukem Forever. Um, oh. <laughs> I, I think again this is the disappointing list. The disappointing I, and also the fact that I got cheated out of sixty dollars. Yeah. Um, I went out day one and yeah. purchased it. And if you can't tell, I have the steel book for it that came as a launch exclusive. At least where I bought it, it was. Um, I came home and put it in and was utterly disappointed with what I got. Um, I actually kind of lucked out on that game. I did, actually pre-ordered the Balls of Steel edition, uh, yeah, I remember and that. the pre-order fell through. <laughs> so, yeah, you did look out on that And one. then I later found it for $15. And yeah, it's it's worthy of being on any worse yeah, it's worst played list. And not to say, I know there are some people out there who, who enjoyed it, um, but I, I'm used to like Duke Nukem 3D, um, even whatever it is. Manhattan Mayhem or whatever it was called, uh, like that one was better, and it's a 2D side scroller. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I had more fun with those. I had more fun with Duke Nukem 2 on DOS. I had more fun <laughs> with that game. I didn't think it was too bad. It was fun. Um, so it it it's first person platforming done the wrong way. First per first person platform is not really that fun anyway. Unless it's done extremely well, say like Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge should be well. Right? Yes, that one was fine. I'm looking forward to the, the new, new Mirror's Edge they're yeah. trying to work on. Uh, but this one was uh, badly done. Um, the writing in it was terrible. Referencing jokes Referencing from 10 years ago. Yeah, and I think the worst was um, the two gun carry limit. I think that, that did it for me because it's Duke Nukem. He has every gun. Yeah. You can't have jokes making fun of, oh, this power armor is for pussies, and yet he can't carry more than two guns. <laughs> you can't so, do that. So, I, yeah. Duke Nigga Forever is full with very inappropriate and poorly done jokes. And oh, there's the one level that's legendary. Yes. Which Wrong. we won't even mention here. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I mean, play it if you want. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hold anything against you for it, but definitely not. Not worth it. My number four is Flashback <laughs> on the Super Nintendo. Yeah. I was. I was very tempted to put that on my list. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have it here. Yeah, it's down there somewhere. Uh, it's not bother finding it. Uh, <laughs> we'll put a picture of it. Here. It's terrible. <laughs> it's. There's not that much to say about it. It's just really confusing. It's. We played it for, between the two of us and Andrew, we played it for at least three hours worth and we didn't figure out anything. No. It, I don't know if the instructions would help or not, but e even so, the controls are awkward, they're slow, it's not a very responsive game, no. and the story writing is worse than <laughs> mediocre for back then. Back then, game writing wasn't very good. No. 
Uh, I know there is like a bit of a cult pull following about for that game. Uh, know, so much so that they even release it for Xbox Live Arcade, you know, which apparently you, is a better interpretation. If of you it. like the game, that's fine. But I couldn't figure it out, and that's why. It's I, on the yeah, list. I couldn't figure that game out either. Yeah. Um, all right, number two. No, number three. Yeah, number, number three, three for me. Uh, Power Rangers Dino Thunder. <laughs> That's actually my third one, too. Yes! <laughs> Number three! <laughs> By the way, we don't know what each other's lists are. We're just saying what they are. Uh, this is completely a surprise for both of us. So it's really funny that it hit number three on both of our lists. Uh. Um, we tried to do oh, our a Let's Play of Power Rangers Dino Thunder on the PS2. Yeah, we, we actually failed to record the sound for the game properly. Yes. Uh, we tried to salvage it a second time. That didn't work. Um, and then you just hated. So I got so fresh. I didn't want. I did not want to play it, and that's why we <laughs> ended up doing a let's play of Monopoly, uh, which is probably not a very good game to do a let's play of. But but it was uh, at least kind of fun to do. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun just to experiment and play around with it. Um, definitely, definitely not a good game. It's the very definition of a cheap cash in game. Yeah, essentially, it's shovelware. It's it's shovelware with a with a name brand on it. And I. It didn't really offend me too much because I've never really been to Power Rangers, but for you... Yeah, Power Rangers is kind of something close to me because I grew up with it and I really enjoyed the show when I was a little kid. It was nostalgic, the same reason yeah. we collect old video games. Exactly. So I felt like it was a bit of a bastardization of it. Especially, well, all the new Power Rangers kind of suck anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> Uh, okay, number two. Are we, that's our, that's our, am I just going to number two then? Because number three is the same? Yeah, okay. just go to number two. <laughs> Alright, number two. Fusion Frenzy on the original Xbox. Um, okay. It's, it's like a party game, essentially. It's like Mario Party for the original Xbox. Um, I think the part of it was that a lot of people hyped this game up to me, and when I put it in, I was bored. I was bored out of my mind. So, I played it. I, you and Andrew were both here. And yeah, I was playing it. I, and it's just chaos. It, there's it, no. It there's just no, feels like a cheap version of Mario Party. Exactly. There's no strategy to it. There's no skill to it. It's just run around and push buttons. I'm not really a fan of those. Huge fan of those games anyway. I don't mind the Mario Party ones. They're pretty they're, fun. They're okay, but yeah, but I've always been kind of fan of them. Yeah. And that's a poor version. It's a poor <laughs> version of it. So. I mean, try it out. What's really worst is I went to trade in a bunch of games at one of our local game stores, yeah. and I couldn't. I had a bit of trading credit, and I didn't know what to buy. And the guy at the store was telling me to buy this to trade in my to trade in games for this game. And by the way, this was in one of the games that I was trading in. In the pile of games, this was in it, and he tried to sell it to me again. <laughs> I'm not naming any names on they, stores, they, but... They wouldn't give you anything for that one? No, they didn't want it. They didn't even want it, and they were trying to sell it for me. That's... wow. <laughs> my, my number two is Star Wars... Um, Masters of Terakasi. No. The Star Wars fighting game on the PlayStation 1. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's the kind of game that's hilariously bad. The controls are hilariously inept. There's this original character that appeared in the game and never showed up anywhere else. Not surprised there. It's it's the kind of game that's fun to laugh at for about half an hour and then you just don't touch it until you find new friends to show it off to. <laughs> kind of like Xena. That that's all. That's really all there is to say about it. It's just a really bad fighting game that happens at the Star Wars. Game. Funny how like labels just get thrown on bad games. Just because it will sell. Yep. Alright, my number one worst game I've played this year. Uh, and maybe, I don't know if anybody really deserves this game, but it's pretty terrible. <laughs> DEF CON 5 on the PlayStation 1. <gasps> I don't know if I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> this game is so confusing. Let me put it this way if you thought Flashback was confusing, this is about 10 times worse. I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll play it after this video. Maybe. <laughs> I honestly, I played this game for about an hour, and I didn't, I did nothing. I did nothing in an hour. A whole hour of playing it. And wow. I could not figure anything. They were telling me to go to the level three of our, whatever my space station or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, I have, I have no idea what the heck to do with this game. 
Uh, and it's by Data East, which is essentially like it's a it's a well known company, but yeah, it's it's pretty terrible. And <laughs> the, I've only kept it around in my collection uh, because it's a long box and because we were doing this video. <laughs> are the only two the only two reasons I'm keeping this game. <laughs> Okay, my number one, and this probably won't surprise you, because I've actually talked about this a fair amount. Knight's Contract. <laughs> I'm actually surprised. <clears throat> okay. Uh, about in the summertime, I was trying to start up a new series about Hidden Gem Hunter. I, I did a video about this game called Jurassic the Hunted. It didn't actually get that many views. That's part of the reason why I never did a second one. The other reason was this was going to be my second video in that series, and this game infuriated me. <laughs> it is the, by far the most frustratingly, unfairly difficult game I have ever played in my life. I mean, the first level seems okay. The, the graphics are basically cheap PlayStation 2 graphics with HD textures every now and then. Some of the character models are already, but the environment's there's virtually no imagination behind it, but the first level's okay. The story is actually kind of intriguing, in that you play as this big, gruff guy who's been cursed with immortality. He can't die, even though he's tired of living. And he was a part of the witch executions in the mid medieval ages, and then somehow a lot of witches are being resurrected. Most of them have their minds played with, but then there's this witch who hasn't had her mind corrupted, so the two year are working together to stop all the evil witches. In concept, that's a, an intriguing, intriguing story. Yeah. The problem is, first off, it's an escort game. If, and no one likes escort games. <laughs> well, The Last of Us is kind of like an escort game, but it, this is if this is the best possible example for an escort game, this is the worst. <laughs> Once you get to the third level, you start getting into these situations. I'm not. I'm gonna try not to talk about this too too much, but there are situations where you can instantly die. There's this boss battle in the third level where there are five different ways the boss has to instantly end the fight, make it... And it doesn't even die right away, just... Boom. It's now impossible in the fight, because no matter what, the witch, Gretchen, is going to die, but it's going to take about a minute, because she's stuck burning in this fire pit. It, it took me more than an hour to beat that boss. I... And then... There... The section that I'm stuck in is actually kind of close to the end of the game. It's this big long fight where there are normal enemies who can instantly kill you. <laughs> there are several fights within one checkpoint where you fight more than one of these guys at the same time, plus other enemies distracting you. And then there are these hallways with these traps moving around that can knock you around because the camera is terrible. <laughs> it's by far the most frustratingly difficult game I've ever played. and. Wow, I'm, that game makes me angry. <laughs> I don't normally swear, but you should have heard me when I play that game sometimes. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, so that's our top list. I was going to say top ten list, but it's not really top ten. It's a top list. <laughs> uh, best and worst games. Best and worst games, games, yes. Um, and not like year of like 2013, but year of, of this channel. Which is actually our year years coming out. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's like January or something like that. Yeah. End of January. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers who have stuck around for a year and are watching our videos. Thanks for, if you've watched the whole video, thanks for sticking yeah, around. Yeah, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Not everyone wants to know people's lists of what they're playing or what their exactly. tops are. Things like <laughs> that. Uh, so uh, please like, uh, the com like the video, comment on the video. Uh, let us know your top and worst games that you've yeah. played. Sure, go uh, ahead. We, we'd like to hear from you. Yeah, it'd be good to hear. Uh, especially, like, good games are good, good to know, too, and then we know yeah. to look for when we're out right there. And bad games are good to know to avoid. <laughs> yep, or if we're looking for some cheap fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ben and I do like bad games, too. Just purely seek out. They're funny. Do a lot of them. Um, yep. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you again next time. See ya.